Welcome everyone to the 2021 The Longest Day Spring Rally. As you get settled in, please join me in the chat and introduce yourself. Share your name, where you're from, and what makes you smile. Let's see how many cities we're representing today. My name is Emily Rosenberger and I live in Charlottesville, Virginia with my amazing family. And I'm thrilled to be one of your hosts today. And I'm your other host. My name is Jody Palakafile. I live in Columbia, Missouri with my lovely wife and daughter. Now, if you haven't already, just take a second, introduce yourself in the chat, share your name, where you're from, and we'd love to hear what makes you smile. For me, every time I just hear my daughter laugh, that makes me smile. It's making me smile right now. And I love it. I'm seeing the chat blow up. Emily, what about you? What makes you smile? Joe, there is nothing better than waking up to warm weather and sunshine. That absolutely always makes me smile. Now that we've been properly introduced, it's time to rally. We are so excited to have you join us today. Get ready to be inspired and motivated. Throughout our time together, please use the chat to ask questions, to share and connect with others. And while you keep chatting and introducing yourselves, Emily, well, why don't you share a little bit more about yourself and who you shine your light for? Thanks, Joe. I shine my light for Dottie, my grandmother who passed away from Alzheimer's disease, as well as the residents that I worked with in senior living who honestly helped shape me into the person that I am today, as well as for my nieces, Allison and Olivia, so that their generation will only have to read about Alzheimer's in their history books. My family and I have been fighting Alzheimer's disease since 2013, and honestly, raising funds quickly became one of my favorite things to do. I've made holiday cards for donations, led a 16-hour exercise challenge, held cornhole tournaments, virtual trivia nights, also end-of-summer splash parties with dunk tanks, pie tossing, and a very fun purple inflatable suit. <laughs> For my latest fundraiser, I took to social media and challenged my network that if they helped me fundraise, I would dye my hair purple and debut right now on the Spring Rally. Mm -hmm. I had 236 comments when I colored it live on Facebook just last night. It was so exciting to see so many, be so many people talking about the end of Alzheimer's. I have already raised over $1,600 allowing me to join the Solstice Champions Club. This exciting fundraising that we lead supports the work of the Alzheimer's Association. Let's check out the impact the association has in our communities and across the globe. 40 years disease wasn't discussed at the dinner table or in the doctor's office, but a group of people devastated by the disease came together to change that. Out of their passion, the Alzheimer's Association was born and today is the leading organization in Alzheimer's care, support, and research. For more than 5.8 million Americans living with Alzheimer's and their more than 16 million caregivers, the association's free 24-7 helpline and website at alz.org are often a first source of information. From in-person support groups to online message boards, the Alzheimer's Association is available wherever and whenever help is needed. The Alzheimer's Association is the nonprofit with the highest impact in Alzheimer's research worldwide, behind only the Chinese and United States governments. Our investments of over $455 million in studies around the globe have uncovered new methods of diagnosis and deepened understanding about the risk factors and causes of this fatal disease. As a result of the association's vision and commitment, the scientific community is now poised to discover breakthrough methods of treatment and prevention. The Alzheimer's Association has activated a nationwide network of dedicated advocates who together with the association work at all levels of government to address the Alzheimer's crisis. Under the association's leadership, and with the support of champions in Congress, federal funding for Alzheimer's research has reached a historic high of $2.3 billion, and policies to enhance access to critical care planning are now in place. 
No other organization has the reach, the knowledge, or the understanding to defeat Alzheimer's disease, but we can't do it alone. Stand with the Alzheimer's Association today to build a world without Alzheimer's disease tomorrow. Join us. That's right. Your participation in the longest day today will help build a world without Alzheimer's disease tomorrow. The longest day is one of the Alzheimer's Association's signature campaigns and we call on each of you to fight Alzheimer's disease by helping to raise these incredibly important funds. When you participate in The Longest Day, you are directly funding local programs and services while advancing research and legislation. The day with the most light is the day that we fight. The best part is that you can raise funds any time during the year. And then on The Longest Day, the summer solstice, which is June 20th this year, you can join participants all over the world and celebrate your success. Participants like Lisa Thompson in Southeastern Virginia, who I wanna shout out today because it is her birthday and she is joining the Longest Day community. Happy birthday, Lisa, and thank you so much for helping to raise almost about $20,000 since 2018. If you're celebrating a special day today, please feel free to drop that in the chat too and wish Lisa a happy birthday. This past TLD season, it was awe-inspiring to read the stories in the Shine a Light Gallery on the Longest Day website, and it was monumental to see the amazing fundraisers people hosted during a pandemic. We even had celebrity champions participate. Actor Michael Chiklis hosted a virtual night of entertainment fundraiser. TV personality Whitney Port shared a series of stories about her grandmother on Instagram, and for the fourth year, actress Amy Aquino raised funds by selling her homemade jam. She picked fruit from her garden and live streamed from her kitchen. I would like to pass the lead to another champion in the fight, my co-host Joe. Well, thanks, Emily. Now, I shine my light for my dad, who's in the early stages of dementia. I was honored to have him preside over my recent marriage ceremony and Despite doing hundreds of weddings over his nearly 50 years as a Presbyterian minister, I had to help him get through the right order of the ceremony. It was one of the happiest days of my life, but it was also, it was also one of the saddest. And I realized how much of him has already gone and that it's only gonna get worse as time passes. I do this work in honor of him, and I do it for my daughter, so she's not gonna have to lose me the way I'm losing him. My father is one of more than six million Americans living with Alzheimer's. Let's learn about some of the brand new facts about the Alzheimer's crisis. are some powerful facts. Helping in the fight for my family and all the others who are impacted is Chief Science Officer Dr. Maria Carrillo. She sets the strategic vision for the Alzheimer's Association Global Research Program. Under Dr. Carrillo's leadership, the association is the world's largest nonprofit funder of Alzheimer's research and is internationally recognized as a pioneer in convening the dementia science community. Please welcome Dr. Maria Carrillo. 
Thank you, Joe. Thanks for that introduction, for sharing your story, and for all of you out there sharing the reason why you're shining your light today. Um, I am the Chief Science Officer at the Alzheimer's Association. I'm so excited to join you for this rally for the longest day, our spring rally. In my 16 years at the association, I have seen incredible advancements beyond my wildest dreams. And I'm excited and proud to say that the Alzheimer's Association is the engine and the, behind this revolution in science and research. The Alzheimer's Association is the world's largest nonprofit funder of Alzheimer's and all dementia research. And as you heard in the video, I'm very proud of being the most impactful uh, behind you know, gov the government, of course, the US government, the Chinese government. And we have you to thank for this. Thank you for everything you do every day to ensure that the Alzheimer's Association is that leader, not only in care and support, but also in research. The longest day is the day with the most light. It's the day that we commemorate caring for those we love and know that we absolutely are getting incredible fulfillment from doing this. And thanks to you at any given moment, every second, every day, someone around the world is also working hard on trying to find answers in research for Alzheimer's and all other dementia. I know you've seen our latest version of the new vision. We updated actually very recently, our vision is Today is a world without Alzheimer's and all other dementia. So we cover all other dementia, not only in what we do with, uh, every day in care and support, but also in research. And I, like all of you, have a personal connection to this disease, which fuels my passion and purpose every day. My family and I saw that devastating impact of this disease on people living with Alzheimer's and dementia that we all share and the impact of being a caregiving family um, and, and a family in that sandwich generation with the grandparents, parents, and then children at home. Today, I'm here to tell you there is hope in research and the Alzheimer's Association is that hope. We fund across six continents and that means that again, at any given moment across the globe, someone's working to end Alzheimer's and any and other dementia. Now, we are focused even more now today on the importance of diversity and equity and inclusion in not only everything we do, but also in research. We must understand the risk factors that exist across all populations and develop strategies, not only for early detection and diagnosis, but also for treatment and potential future prevention. That's what we're looking for. And thanks to, of course, our own part, the cloud program, it's a clinical trial grant program inspired by Mikey Hogue, a fantastic donor in Northern California. She helps us diversify these treatment approaches. And in a recent partnership with Bill Gates has really helped us expand our clinical trial program, funding so many more trials and innovative approaches to not only address Alzheimer's, but other types of dementia as well. And speaking of potential therapies, I know you've all heard of the potential therapy on the horizon. We're not sure what will happen this summer if Biogen's aducanumab drug will be approved by the FDA, but we're all waiting. And this is the first time that in almost 15 years, the FDA has actually taken a look at a new potential therapy. That's progress. It feels like progress. And of course, we're all hoping for a positive outcome, but um, we're just waiting uh, for the FDA to make their determination but this drug has a chance, if approved, to slow the biological course of Alzheimer's and slow cognitive decline in people with mild cognitive impairment due to Alzheimer's and early AD. So this is an important moment and it would not have been possible without our leadership in advancing the science that has actually brought us to this moment. And I don't have time to get into those things today because you guys have a lot to talk about as you initiate our spring rally for the longest day. But trust me, we are involved in all aspects of Alzheimer's and dementia research that enable that drug pipeline that includes that job that's in front of the FDA right now in reviewing this recent drug. But as we're waiting for more effective treatments to be available at our doctor's office, there are also a number of global studies like the US pointer study, our own 
pointer study and the global network of worldwide fingers that are trying to build evidence on what we can do now. These are interventions that could reduce our risk for dementia, even Alzheimer's. They are, include diet, sleep, cognitive engagement, uh, physical activity. And that's important because while we wait for those treatments, we need to be able to make recommendations to everyone on how we can reduce our risk as we age. And our research in the research community is on our reach is unparalleled. We reach every corner of the world and every organization, government and academic or industry is touched by our leadership. I think you know that we're all living right now in this online community. And hopefully soon we see the light at the end of the tunnel and we'll be able to convene. But this summer, this past summer, the international um, conference that we sponsor, the Alzheimer's Association's International Conference, we call it AAIC for short, is normally the largest conference on planet Earth around dementia. But because we went online, because of the pandemic, only online, we had an amazing breakthrough of individuals. We expected about 6,000 in Amsterdam, and instead we got 33,000 plus registrants from 163 different countries by going virtual. So that experience has really, I think, opened up all of our eyes. Certainly, um, we uh, ha are having to think more creatively. I know that you all are experiencing this too, not only the way you work, but the way you live right now. And this experience uh, shows us that there is such a need for research uh, in every corner of the globe. And so I'm very proud of our organization for providing that leadership and that experience to so many people across the world. But I hope that what I've shared with you today expands your pride in everything we do at the Alzheimer's Association for those that we serve. There are tens of thousands of scientists working around the clock to find answers for our families. And when you talk about the Alzheimer's Association and what's new in research, remember to tell them that research at any given moment and discovery is going on at everywhere across the globe. And we will find answers for our loved ones. Thanks for everything you do to move for our mission forward. Thank you for standing up to the darkness of Alzheimer's by participating and shining a light in the longest day and all of the creativity that you bring to the table to move our mission forward. I really appreciate it. And thank you for allowing me to be with you just for these few minutes of the day as you start your rally. Dr. Carrillo, thank you. Thank you so much for educating, inspiring, and reminding all of us why we fight. Now thinking about fundraising, fundraising can be anything, which includes just sharing your story. This past December, Colleen and Mary Ann, their sister is from Chicago, um, they took a moment on Facebook and Instagram to remember their father and share how Lewy body dementia forever impacted their family and asked for donations. Seriously, thank you, ladies. So our next speakers leading the way to end alls are Phil Gaddis, a writer for living in, with younger onset Alzheimer's and his husband, Tim Weaver. They're advocates, they're powerful fundraisers and they're co-chairs of the Longest Day Volunteer Committee for the Delaware Valley chapter of the Alzheimer's Association. Please join me in welcoming Phil and Tim to tell their story. I'm Phil Guttis, and the Scalumpicus over here is my husband and caregiver, Tim Weaver. Welcome to the 2021 Longest Day kickoff, Spring Kickoff Rally. Uh, first, a bit about us. Um, Phil is a former New York Times reporter and former communications professional. I, a uh, jack of all trades, I'm a former graphic designer and in-home and now in-home pet care and dog walker. Uh, we've lived here in New Hope uh, about 15 years, just uh, an hour north of Philadelphia on the Delaware River. Um, we've been married for, I think, 550, I mean, five years. We've been together. Six, Sorry. That's about right. Yeah. yeah. No, but we've been Feels together like for 16 years. Uh, we have a beautiful home here in New Hope with many dogs, cats, and a turtle named Turtley. As you can see from the background behind us, we have a small obsession for what are called designer vinyl toys. 
we actually believe that we have one of the largest private collections of these designer vinyl toys anywhere in the world. And if anybody's interested, we can certainly give you a uh, virtual tour sometime in the future. Um, Phil and I have been honored to serve as the co-chairs of the Longest Day Delaware Valley Chapter Organization and Volunteer Committee for four years now. We've had the pleasure of working with many wonderful people like Sue Ronsky and Maggie Shope and all the other wonderful staff at the association. Um, although I'm kind enough to let Phil do a majority of the committee work. Uh, yeah, vast, vast majority of the committee work. But that's okay, because unfortunately I do have a lot of time. I'm retired now and home all the time. And let's not talk about the pandemic. This all started about five years ago. I was diagnosed with early onset Alzheimer's as part of the drug trial for Biogen's drug aducanumab. I'd had memory problems for years. My sister saw an ad in, uh, on Facebook actually for a nearby clinical trial and I thought, why not? Let's give it a try. Through that trial, I unfortunately learned that my memory problems were not a figment of my imagination. Tim and I have participated in the Biogen trial uh, for almost five years now, um, and we're eagerly awaiting to see whether or not the government will approve the drug for general use in June. After my diagnosis, I, I knew I was going to want to write about uh, this new journey, so I reached out to the Alzheimer's Association press office to get some hints and clues. And from that initial call, I was led to the Early Stage Advisory Council, where I, Tim and I served for a year, and then ultimately to a role with the Delaware Valley chapter, first as our, uh, as early, as um, longest day volunteers. And now, uh, about a year ago, I joined the chapter board. And I'm so honored to be a part of the association and to help others who, are, who have been diagnosed with this disease and their care partners. As co-chairs of The Longest Day, we've worked hard to set a good example for our chapter, raising $10,000 or more for the last four years. The first year we had a purple party, which in, was a huge undertaking, a big uh, party for about 150 people with a band and an auction and whatnot. The second year, we scaled it back and had a wonderful event, uh, Row to Remember, at our friend's uh, rowing studio in Lambertville. And uh, we rowed, or actually, I won't say we rowed, but <laughs> Phil and the other participants rowed, uh, I think, about a half a million uh, meters that Saturday morning. Um, I decorated the night before. <laughs> and we had our best fundraising year. And then the uh, pandemic hit, and uh, this year... And we don't know what we did. Yeah. We but, we, but we raised a good amount of money. Yeah. And then this <laughs> year we're registered, and uh, we're thinking of uh, many things, but have no cool plans. If anybody has any ideas, we're open to suggestions. Yes, please. Um, and in closing, I just want to thank you all for joining us today. The Longest Day is a powerful campaign that allows anyone to raise money for the Alzheimer's Association by doing the things they love most. Now go forth and, and have fun and raise the critically needed funds for the association so we can continue helping, educating, and most importantly, supporting research to find a treatment or cure so that future generations do not have to grapple. 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 <laughs> grapple. Okay. Not what I said. Uh, grapple with dementia. Thanks again. Thanks so much. Oh, wow. Thank you so much, Phil and Tim, for sharing your lives and, well, for motivating us to work even harder to help end Alzheimer's. Like Phil and Tim, Ross and Nicole here, they're using the power of social media. They've taken their love of gaming and their passion to end Alzheimer's to raise funds for the longest day. They shine their light for Ross's grandpa, and for Nicole's college friend, Madison. TLD's built some really great tools for live streamers like Ross and Nicole, who are from Raleigh, North Carolina. They put these tools to work in live streaming their gaming for 12 hours. 
they had this initial goal of raising $500 and they had to keep increasing it throughout the day. From doing casual games like Pokemon to more competitive games, they engaged their audience and they finished the day raising more than $2,000. That's huge. I'd love to introduce our next speaker, Steve. He's participated in The Longest Day for four years. Steve's also serving on the Alzheimer's Association Florida Gulf Coast Chapter Board. He's on the TLD committee and he's painting everything purple in his hometown of Duden, Florida. Now, most importantly, Steve shines a light for his mom, Rita. Please welcome Steve Olson. Thank you very much and hi everyone. My name is Steve Olson and uh, my mother passed away in December of 2017 and I miss her every single day. Shortly after her passing, my daughter and I started looking for a way to do something to honor her courageous fight in her life. And uh, we decided to do just a, a friends and family event. We picked a, a local restaurant downtown, had a nice patio and invited friends and family. But at the same time, we decided to go to some of the local businesses and see if they wouldn't provide some gift cards, gift baskets, things we could use to help raise funds to support the Alzheimer's Association. The response we had from the business community was really almost overwhelming. Everyone we talked to was just so gracious, gift cards, gift baskets, uh, just different things that really helped us to have a great event on a single afternoon and we raised $3,000 and, and honored my mother. And I, I thought that was, it was just a fun event. Everybody had a really great time and said, hey, do you guys think you'll do this again next year? And we, we really hadn't thought about that. Um, later that same year, I had the opportunity to attend the Alzheimer's Association uh, Leadership Summit in San Antonio, Texas. Just an extraordinary event where you get to hear people much like this call. You get to hear people from all over the country uh, share some of the exciting things they've been able to do and oftentimes taking fairly ordinary ideas and executing them in an extraordinary way, reaching a lot of people and, and raising the much needed funds to fight this disease. I left that summit with just a solid commitment, not only to have another event, but to have an event, do something that would reach more people and raise funds. Um, and that really sort of that process uh, led me to what is now known as Paint Dunedin Purple in our community. The concept was really very simple. It was instead of doing a single event in a single location, why not invite all of those wonderful businesses that had been so gracious and offered us gift certificates and things to participate sort of individually, but under this umbrella of a community-wide event, Paint Dunedin Purple. So we approached those businesses and we asked them really to do three things. Would you ask your staff to wear purple on the day of this event? And would you ask your uh, customers to wear purple on the day of this event? And maybe the best of all, and what the businesses really loved was, you can raise money in any way you think works for your business to support the mission of the Alzheimer's Association. And as we went around and talked to businesses, one of the first things we recognized that at least 50% of these businesses had a connection to this disease. And if not a direct connection, they certainly knew of someone else who did have a connection. And for those that did have a direct connection, this was much more than just a thing, this was personal. And so those folks really helped engage and, and helped us to sort of spread this word um, and really, really helped get us going. Um, throughout the process, we got introduced to the Chamber of Commerce, to the Downtown Dunedin Merchants Association, and those folks in, sort of supported this, helped us uh, bring more businesses in. The end result is 40 businesses participated and we raised $9,000 three times what we had raised during the single event the year before. We really were excited and there was a lot of talk about this in the community that this was a fun event that we should do again. And 
as we approached 2020, we were so excited. We'd created a committee and uh, we, were, we started early and talking about all these grand ideas to grow this event, but we didn't expect the pandemic. And there was the very real possibility that this event just was not gonna happen. But in talking to the business owners in the community, ultimately everybody said, no, we'll, we'll postpone it, but let's do this. And we did, we moved forward and with pretty tremendous results. At this point in time, we now had sponsors that, that purchased custom paint and Eden purple t-shirts that we were able to sell to raise additional funds. The city of Dunedin did a proclamation proclaiming this day, paint Dunedin purple for Alzheimer's day and encouraged all residents of the community to participate. And we even had two local news channels cover the event and help to promote it. All of this in the midst of a pandemic. My hats off to the business community in Dunedin for really stepping up and, and having a tremendous event uh, during this tough time. Working with these businesses on Paint Dunedin Purple has really been sort of therapy for me and helped me to sort of channel my anger at a disease that took so much from my mother and impacted my entire family. You'll remember this all started from a single event to honor my mother. And today in her memory, it's an annual community-wide event that supports wholeheartedly the mission of the Alzheimer's Association to have a world without Alzheimer's and all other dementia. What is even more rewarding is in our community, people are not afraid to talk about Alzheimer's. Some of these folks did videos online telling their story. They realized that the Alzheimer's Association is there for them when, they're need, when they need help. And they know that the Alzheimer's Association is doing the hard work to bring us closer to a cure. I believe this type of event, event could be happening throughout communities in the state of Florida, and for that matter, throughout the country. And I encourage any of you who might wanna take something like this on to introduce this idea or something like it in your business community, share your story and see what happens. Thank you so much. Thank you, Steve. Thank you so much for showing us how building relationships with companies is a key part to our success. Steve's hard work has given him the honor of being part of the Solstice Champions Club. Solstice Champions are participants who raise $1,600 and we want every participant to join that club. Many participants achieve this honor by just sharing their story on social media. Let's celebrate all of our Solstice Champions. All past and current champions, please share your name in the chat. You have a lot to be proud of. And let's see if we can make that number grow. If every single person that RSVP'd for this rally would raise $1,600, that would be more than one and a half million dollars to help in our fight. And to make sure you become a Solstice Champion, I'll share something that I've learned. You can truly make anything into the Longest Day fundraiser. I've even collected donations for pictures of my cat. Now, I understand not everyone has such an adorable cat, but let's check out some Longest Day participants who are using their interest to raise funds for the Longest Day. Chris Hardigan from Toledo, Ohio, rose for 16 hours in honor of his father and grandfather. He gets businesses and his friends and family to donate and row with him. Also, Chris does an amazing job using the power of social media, thanking and updating his donors along the way. And of course, the best sunrise on the summer solstice goes to Jin DP of Honolulu, Hawaii, who raised funds during his sunrise hike. Absolutely beautiful. Jill Watson from Camas, Washington has hosted a tennis tournament for the past three years in honor of her mother. She asks her fellow tennis club members to join her team and to play with her. Her safe outdoor tournament raised over $3,400 this past season. Adding a challenge element will always increase your fundraising. Dan Donnelly from Meridian, Mississippi hosted Facebook live events 
sharing his story and asking people to challenge him to do squats or pull-ups for a donation. And Gary Johnson from Irvine, California is doing a different challenge each month, starting with him eating a mystery pizza and ending with him getting his belly button pierced. Gary updates his community with his TLD challenge thermometer. Our next speaker is from Clinton, Maryland, where Loretta has participated in the longest day for seven years. She lends her professional training skills to travel the country and speak on her caregiving experiences. Like some of you, Loretta shines her light in honor of her mother. Please help me welcome Loretta Woodward Vini. Hi, everyone. My mom, Doris, was diagnosed with dementia in 2006, 15 years ago. And as tough as that diagnosis was, the first thing I decided was that we were going to make the most of every single moment while my mom's memory was still intact. So for comfort after her diagnosis, we turned to something that we had used for my whole life almost, Lego bricks. And building with the bricks was almost therapy for us. And it allowed mom to talk about her feelings and it allowed us to keep that bond that we had when I was a kid. And it almost made us forget about the dementia. And several years into mom's diagnosis, someone asked me to build a Lego replica of what it was like to love someone with Alzheimer's. So I built this Lego heart with the hole in the middle. And I built that with the hole in the middle because I believe that loving someone with Alzheimer's is like having a huge hole in your heart. And that hole just grows as the disease progresses. So for the first six of the seven years that I've been doing the longest day, I joined because I wanted to uh, find a cure for this disease in the most desperate way, like everybody else. And we were fifth generation Washingtonians. So for those first six years, I did a 20 mile average walk through the streets of DC, going to all of the places that were pertinent in our lives. And it was so much fun. And then by 2014, we still were building with the Legos, but mom never, no longer remembered who I was. And as sad as that was, there was one amazing thing. And that was whenever you got the Legos out, she remembered that. So she just kept building and having a great time. And this is one of the first things that she built, which was this little house with doors. Now you can see it little house with doors and windows that opened. And she did that all by herself. And she did some artwork that we really loved as well. Check that out. Pink was her favorite color, is her favorite color. So this is a pretty cool piece of art for someone with dementia. So I had been putting so much of our artwork and uh, artwork that other people did that had dementia that I was working with as my community give back that I decided in 2020, let's give up the walking. It was fun, but let's give up the walk and try to get a lot more people involved and let's do a Lego event. How about that? So I called it building a world without Alzheimer's. How about that? So we raised funds by asking our friends and family to make a donation and then build whatever they want and send us the pictures. And it was a huge success. We were going to have it live, of course, in my church, and then people were going to come by, but it worked out so much better doing it virtually because then lots of people could participate. So people that I had been building stuff with for years around the country, they contributed. And we had some folks in Europe uh, contribute as well. I think the furthest person was from Germany, and that was just really so cool. And so the building the world without Alzheimer's just was probably one of the most fun I ever had. I built the tallest thing, a mountain uh, of engineers going to the top of the mountain to find a cure. And so it was uh, three and a half feet tall. That was pretty neat. And then just built all other kinds of things that would remind us that we need a cure for this disease desperately. So what's happening in 2021? Well, I'm going to stick with the Legos, but I'm going to change the theme just slightly 
this year on it. Try to shine our light even brighter. And this year is going to be called Art Against Alzheimer's. And I'm going to be asking everybody to create a piece of art and hopefully we can have like a gallery effect at the end and maybe um, do a big collage of what everybody built. And we're going to continue to fight this disease until we uh, find a cure. So hopefully someone near you might want to put some bricks together and help us find a cure. Thank you all so much. Oh my gosh, uh, that is, yeah. thank you so much, Loretta. That is awesome. I, I want my family to get involved with that event because it sounds so much fun. Seriously, thank you so much for inspiring us to use our creativity to help end Alzheimer's. Now, a lot of participants have been enjoying their love of baking and cooking while raising funds. First year participants, Shira and Kate, they're 17 year old friends from Santa Monica, California. They baked, sold, and safely delivered more than 800 cookies in February. <laughs> you see the sweet photo of Shira, she, that's one of her and her grandmother baking. The ladies honor Shira's grandmother and grandfather, and they've got plans to continue fundraising, baking a different cookie flavor each month. So now TLD leader Kelsey and her entire team at Edgewood Healthcare, a long-term care facility community and a global team in Fargo, North Dakota, they also use sweet treats to raise some funds. They hosted a drive-by bakery they were selling caramel rolls, coffee, and even these awesome purple take-home cookie decorating kits. Now, our last speaker today is Judy Johansson from Watertown, Massachusetts. And she's participated in TLD for nine years. She's considered by many to be the mother of the longest day. And she's been active in the Massachusetts New Hampshire TLD committee. She's advocated on behalf of the Alzheimer's Association in Washington, DC. And she's really been the mentor to participants throughout the country. Junie, she shines a light in honor of her husband, Steve, and joins us to share her story. Please welcome Judy Johansson. Thanks, Joe. This is our life is the name of our Longest Day team. And uh, this is our story. Ours is a story rooted in love and one which is rich with blessings that range from warmth and light, family, traditions, and legacy. It is one where love has been the author and also one where Alzheimer's has interrupted it. In 2011, when my darling husband, Steve, was diagnosed with younger onset Alzheimer's, at the age of 59, we were stunned. This was not how we envisioned this part of our life story. We had assumed we had more years ahead and numerous memories to be made. We had dreams of sharing our traditions and hobbies with our grandchildren. We were no strangers to Alzheimer's as we were watching Steve's mom who had been diagnosed with Alzheimer's four years earlier. We turned to the Alzheimer's Association immediately to help us navigate this chapter of our lives. We became full mission recipients. We became interested in research, attended support groups, educational programs, advocacy events, and more. In, 20, in 2012, when we heard about The Longest Day, we thought that this might be a good way for us to give back to this association that was helping us remain active and connected. We invited friends and family to join us in helping raise funds and awareness. Our tiny grandchildren sold lemonade in honor of their gramps and with him by their side. Through the years, our event grew. We now invite our town to go purple and we begin our day with a hope lap at our local field. People show up in purple and share hugs and stories of how they have been affected by Alzheimer's and other related dementias. Families all over town honor their own family traditions with various activities. We gather at the end of the day with a sunset ceremony 
to proclaim that we did, that what we did on this day was important and it must not be forgotten. New traditions and memories are created. Over the years, we've invited people to wear a purple string around their wrist to remind them that they're not alone in this quest to end Alzheimer's. We are tied together by hope of a future without Alzheimer's. We have invited people to light candles of unity on the winter solstice because where there is light, there is hope and there's strength in numbers. When someone receives a diagnosis of Alzheimer's, the whole family is impacted. The longest day has given us a way to share lessons with our grandchildren. It has offered us a positive and powerful mechanism to create a different family legacy than we had imagined. Our longest day event has changed and evolved over the years. An enormous benefit of this is that we were always able to cater to Steve's changing stages of Alzheimer's. Edward Markham wrote, there is a destiny that makes us brothers. None goes his way alone. All that we send into the life of others comes back into our own. My darling Steve broke free He broke free from the chains of Alzheimer's in April of 2018. And then it took both of his parents in 2019. Admittedly, I was feeling kind of tired in 2020 and at a loss of how to handle the longest day without our whole town working together. I took to social media and posted photos of past longest days and the support both financially and emotionally began flowing in. But on the morning of the longest day, there was a heaviness in my heart and my mind as I was feeling the weight of what had been lost to Alzheimer's and this pandemic. On that morning, as I sat there feeling down, our 10 year old grandson, Nathan came in adorned in his purple t-shirt and his little longest day lemonade apron. And he said, come on, Hannah, get your purple on. It's the longest day and we always celebrate this day. New traditions, lasting legacy, and of course, love. Lessons we hadn't imagined teaching are now articulately written into our family's story. And this next generation will carry that on. Yes, Alzheimer's is an integral part of our family's story. So on the longest day, we will always honor those living with Alzheimer's and other related dementias. We will remember our loved ones whom we have lost and we will have hope for a future when Alzheimer's is nothing more than a memory we will continue inviting others to join us. Thank you, Judy, for sharing your story and for reminding us of how important it is to carry on your loved one's legacy. I'm sure you're like me and have been absolutely moved by today's powerful speakers. Let's take this opportunity to put our energy into action and start fundraising. If you have not already registered for the longest day, that is your first step to take. Go to alz.org slash the longest day. Don't worry if you're not sure yet how you'll raise those funds, you can determine that later. Whether you're new to the longest day or have been participating for years, Joe has some actions you can take to be a successful fundraiser. Yeah, um, you know, first, when you invite people to donate, share why you're fundraising. You've heard powerful stories today and your story and facts and figures about Alzheimer's, it's gonna allow people to connect with you and what you're doing. Next, 
update your fundraising page. That's the web page that you're going to receive or you will receive when you're registered. Third, plan and fundraise early and fundraise in a variety of ways, like hosting a bake sale or texting friends to donate on your birthday, or maybe even asking a yoga studio to host a donation class in June. Fourth, Use the built-in Facebook fundraiser and all other social medias that you have to share your story. You can launch the Facebook fundraiser right from your participant page. And lastly, just invite everyone in your network to donate. Whew, okay, thanks, Joe. Whew, I am just, I'm blown away by the speakers today. I am feeling so inspired. Ladies and gentlemen, get excited because as a special treat for attending the rally today and to give you some extra motivation, you're the first to hear about our national fundraising challenge called Rally and Raise. So once we're registered, let's take the lead from 17-year-old powerhouses, Shira and Kate, who within a month of registering raised that $1,635. Individuals who raise $200 between now and April 1st will get this limited edition, the longest day picnic blanket. All you have to do, text 10 friends, ask for a $20 donation, then you're there. Run, knit, post on social media. Whatever way you want to start fundraising, just start today. Now, I'm going to pass it back to Judy to wrap it up for our 2021 Spring Rally. Thanks to all of our speakers and participants we featured, and thanks to each of you for joining. When you leave here today, remember each of you have co a coaching team in your own backyard. You have a long estate committee, committee members, and you have a chapter staff partner like Emily and Joe. They are here to show you fundraising tools and cheer you along the way. I hope you walk away today feeling and knowing that you are part of something big, a movement that connects us through our experiences and willingness to fight the darkness of Alzheimer's. Alzheimer's makes us all have to think differently about how we deal with new situations. Power that ingenuity to fundraise. Share your story and share the 24 seven helpline number because you never know who will need it. I will work hard in honor of my dearest darling Steve and I know you will too. Together, we can get closer to our ultimate goal, the first survivor of Alzheimer's. Thank you for rallying with us today. Be safe, stay well, and keep shining your light. Goodbye. <laughs>